Cali, 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 Cali. State of California. California is massive. In Southern California alone, 15 million people reside in both LA and San Diego counties. That's like two New York cities. Between the lanky, swaying palm trees, glamorous Hollywood soirees, and very, very bad traffic, there's a reason why SoCal culture is world famous. I've spent a lot of time in Southern California and actually got my start cooking professionally at a food truck out in LA, so this episode is, it's very near and dear to my heart. Before we begin, let's grab some insights from a SoCal local and taco eating expert, my buddy Josh. So Josh, you've been in LA for six, seven years now. You're a man of food. You're in food media. That's what you do for a living. You've had your fair share of fish tacos. What to you makes for like the perfect fish taco, Southern California Baja style fish taco? Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about that style of fish taco, mm -hmm. soft mm -hmm. flour tortilla, I know that's controversial. Wow. A lot of, okay. Honestly, I like a good corn tortilla, but for specific applications, you know, like if I'm having al pastor, totally. it's corn tortilla, like 10 times out of 10. Yeah. Flour tortilla tortilla small double up on the tortilla crispy mm -hmm. battered fish yeah kind of like a fish and chips a variety right. if you will uh-huh and then something like super acidic like a, a, a super acidic slaw could sure, be sure, green like cabbage. cabbage could be red mm -hmm. cabbage you know like an avocado sauce sure. like a good spicy like cilantro lime avocado sauce on that mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. That's pretty much it when it comes to a fish taco. Fish tacos. Josh is the type of dude who's driven over an hour to get a good taco. So I definitely respect his word and I love the passion. So thank you, Josh. All right, so the fact is, I do agree with Josh. I think a flour tortilla for fish tacos, particularly Baja style, is uh, superior. However, I live really close to this super dope mom and pop Mexican grocery store that's also a tortilleria. They grind corn fresh every day to make this dough. I go in and just get a couple pounds. It makes great tortillas, and, and so I'll show you how that works. We're gonna make both. Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer for fish tacos, corn or flour. If you can get your hands on masa made with fresh corn, it's a game changer. The corn tortillas taste far superior than those made with masa harina, which is dried corn that has been ground into a flour. Buying fresh masa like this is great because most of the work is already done. All you gotta do is flatten them out and toss them on a hot comal or plancha. No worries if you can't find masa. Like Josh, I actually prefer flour tortillas for fish tacos anyways. Which is what we are making here. Now, I've sped this process up for the sake of time, so if you want a full tutorial on the flour tortillas section of this recipe, go ahead and check out the video in the description description below. Like many Americans, I grew up eating crappy, puffy, generic flour tortillas from the grocery store. It wasn't until I was in my teens that I've tried my first handmade flour tortilla, and let me tell ya, flour tortillas made with lard will blow you away. These are definitely worth making, trust me. Okay, pico de gallo. This is maybe the easiest, most refreshing thing that you can make with minimal work. A chunky cooling salsa that's gonna go great in our tacos. I just like to salt the tomatoes a little bit in advance because it will help draw more moisture out of them and it'll help keep the pico from like weeping and going really soggy. It'll stay like crisp and fresh longer. So I salt these and let them drain for like, you know, a couple minutes. Cut up your miters, making sure to slice out the gooey innards and seeds. Season them up, then mix them together with onions, jalapenos, cilantro, lime juice, salt. And this is not too traditional, but I do like to add a dash of olive oil. Tiny bit of olive oil in there. Give that all a schmixy schmixy and that's that. Just pop it in the fridge till we're ready for it. Moving on to the slaw component of the taco, we're gonna keep things really simple. Colby. Great job. I'm going to use a mandolin to shred some super thin strands of green cabbage because it's more efficient, but a knife does do the trick too, of course. Just do your best to keep things super fine. We're going for a delicate slaw that we are going to drape on the fish without turning the whole thing into a cabbage taco. In with a dash of mayo, some salt, and good vinegar, or lime juice. Squeeze that salt and acid into the slaw with your hands, then cover it up and plop it next to the pico in the fridge until we're ready for it. On to salsa number two. These are dried arbol chilies. They're gorgeous both in color and spice level. These guys are hot. Treat these dried chilies like you would any spice, right? I'm toasting these off with some garlic in a dry pan, which is just gonna kind of wake them up and make things more aromatic, giving the salsa a slightly charry flavor. Add the toasted chilies and garlic to a blender to pulverize into a fine powder before adding in your apple cider vinegar, water, salt. 
We're calling this a salsa because that's what it is, but from an American lens, this might be more closely related to a hot sauce in flavor and texture. If you like things spicy, you're in luck because this stuff is hot. Just cover it up, put it aside for now. So we need something creamy, smooth, and cooling to balance out that super spicy herbal salsa. So we're gonna make an avocado crema using avocados, and this is crema, or a Mexican table cream. It's basically like a creme fraiche. All we're going to do here is prep some avocado simply by pitting them out, taking the skin off, then blending them with crema, some lime juice, and salt. If you don't have crema, you can sub it for creme fraiche or standard sour cream, that's totally fine. What matters most is that the sauce is creamy, tangy, and seasoned properly with salt and lime juice, so adjust seasoning as needed. Oh, and I like to pop this in a squeeze bottle, but you don't have to do that. You can just put this in a standard, you know, resealable container. It just makes it a little easier to drizzle over the taco, and it will stay good in your fridge for a couple days. So I just kind of like it in the bottle. Also, this stuff is really tasty on eggs or just like any sandwich. All right, look at us, onto the final component already. Every fish taco needs fish, so here I have a beautiful red snapper that I've filleted, but any white saltwater fish is gonna get the job done. You know, halibut, cod, tilapia, mahi-mahi, grouper, the list goes on. This batter recipe is from a legendary restaurant near London called The Fat Duck. Chef Heston Blumenthal and his team use a mixture of beer and vodka in this batter to form an extra lacy, delicate, perfectly light batter that's great for fish and chips and our fish tacos. Not to get too sciencey, but alcohol evaporates quicker than water, so when it's added to the batter and fried, the liquid becomes super volatile while exiting the batter, leaving us with a wispy, airy, and very crunchy final product. You can totally make this in advance and keep it in the fridge cold, but I find that it's best when made fresh, just before frying. Season the fish with salt, then dip them into all-purpose flour, which is just going to help that batter adhere, then carefully lower them into the hot oil that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit 176 C. The fish only takes a minute or two to cook, so keep an eye on things and remove them when they're perfectly GB, or golden brown. All right, there it is. We just made everything from scratch and are now ready to build our fish tacos. Now, I gotta keep it real. In most cases, I would say if the spot serves tacos in these little dorky metal holders, get the hell out of there. That isn't gonna be the real deal. But for the sake of this video and convenience, and of course a fire thumbnail, we're reaching for the taco stand. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's kinda key. Build your tacos by layering two flour tortillas, placing down a piece of fish, then it's on with a dash of our mega spicy arbol salsa, you don't need a lot, trust me, then a moderate topping of cabbage, not too much, scoop on a bit of that pico de gallo, zigzag on some avocado crema, and of course hit it with a squeeze of fresh limon. And that, my friend, is one American dish that isn't actually American at all, but you know, when in Southern California. There are few things better than tacos and beer after a long day under the sun at the beach. Or after a grueling day sitting in front of a computer screen. Either way, you're gonna have a good time. Tacos and beer are a good time. If you're an existing omnivore and coming back for more to watch this video, thank you so, so much. I give you, I give you a virtual hug. Next episode, we are driving up the one to Northern California or NorCal. So if you dug this episode, be sure to subscribe if you're new here. If you think you know what we are going to make, comment below. Have a whack at the guess. Have a whack at the guess. Have a whack at the guess. Also, do us a solid and drop your favorite food from your home state in the comments below. I love hearing feedback and your responses, but also it lets me know what I should potentially research. It really does help me out, so please do that. And I shall see you beautiful babies next time.